is Mickey Blanco. I'm an artist, performing artist and musician. And I was invited to the festival to be a juror uh, of the films. And also uh, really, really super flattered to be receiving or have received the Nino Gennaro Prize. I, this is the first time that I've ever been uh, asked to be uh, a juror of a film festival and it's the first time that I've ever fully participated in a film festival. I've been to film festivals before to, you know, to, uh, you know as an audience member to see maybe one or two films, um, but I have, uh, I've never, uh, you know, fully committed to seeing a wide range of films at a film festival. And so, um, I didn't know, you know, what to expect. I, I guess I did expect, you know, that we would be spending a lot of, uh, you know, our time watching movies, which, come on, like, who doesn't enjoy that? Um, but I think one of the things that uh, I've come away with from this experience is just, I mean, and especially because this is, a, uh, you know, an international queer film festival, just how diverse the narratives were uh, within each film, you know? Sometimes, sometimes especially with, with work that gets labeled queer, you expect to view work that sadly has um, certain tropes that we associate, you know, uh, with queer art or queer work. Um, and I think that a lot of those tropes kind of, I think, really come from this, you know, lineage of certain work or certain work, you know, in the 80s or 90s, you know, being labeled, you know, gay or, or, or lesbian work and, you know, maybe there's uh, uh, always a really physical or sexual element or always really about the body or um, somehow tied to some kind of, uh, trauma or some time or some form of abuse, you know, things that are really common within the queer experience, but that, you know, have now been seen and done before. So what I was so happy about was that so many of these queer films played with sexuality and gender in so much of a nuanced way, so far from a lot of the, the tropes that have really ghettoized queer work in the past. And I was really, 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 really happy that, um, that the curators and the selectors of the films chose such diverse work and work where a lot of times, you know, m m maybe you went away with it thinking, oh, okay, well, maybe that, that was a queer element, but you were surprised by it. Nothing was overt, you know? And even when it was overt, it was done in a way that I felt was authentically original. And, and, and a lot of the films really did feel contemporary. And I didn't like everything I saw, but, uh, but maybe it's not so much also about liking everything, you know? I think that, I think that for me, coming from the, you know, this world of like art and, 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 and music, um, there were certain considerations that I had never even made about what makes a good film. You know, obviously you have this gut reaction sometimes, but uh, if, if anything, some of the films that I didn't like, I still walked away feeling like, oh wow, I just had a window into a world I previously did not know about and an experience that I feel uh, challenged by yet happy that I had. Uh, I think for me, I think for me it, it, you know, it begins with, uh, I, think, I think for me, queer really begins as, truthfully, this label that, you know, heteronormative society has placed on, you know, gender non-conforming people, uh, people that uh, obviously identify with, you know, uh, uh, a sexual orientation that is, 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 that is not of the opposite sex. Um, but also, you know, now uh, we have other distinctions, like people who identify as non-binary, the trans community. So I think I, think I always start there. Um, 
but there's such an ancient history to what it is to be queer. And so when we make the mistake of only letting the 20th or the 21st century kind of define who and what we are, we do like a disservice to ourselves and to, you know, as queer people and to literally the ancient lineage of people around the world that were who they were or operated in certain positions in society. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, I, I guess that, I, we could, that, that goes into a whole entire other like, you know, philosophical and actual uh, uh, historical, you know, conversation, uh, sociopolitical, uh, political. Um, but I think if anything, you know, we, since we're talking about this contemporary moment, um, I think that it's, I think in the last probably like five years, now so many things that once were viewed as marginalized and still are, are, are trickling into the mainstream. And, you know, uh, two years ago, I think my mom, you know, or was it even last year, I had a conversation with my mother who was 65 years old and out of the blue, almost as if to like, you know, show me she had learned something new, she starts talking to me about a television program that she watches where one of the characters is non-binary. And she talked about it in such a cavalier way, almost as if to like show off to me like, I know what that is. I know, I know what this distinction is, you know? Um, so I think that now that these conversations are entering the mainstream is where it's this moment of, okay, like how and what and, 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 and where and, and how are we defining, you know, our, our, ourselves. And um, yeah, and I just, I mean, it's a really exciting time. It's a really, especially it's a really exciting time, you know what I mean, for you have people who are a little bit older who, you know, maybe have fought, who maybe fought, you know, in the, in the, in the gay rights, you know, liberation movement, you know. Um, people who, who fought, you know, during, you know, the AIDS epidemic. Um, so that we could get to this place now, you know. Um, but it's, it's, it's a really interesting time, and I think that overall, maybe finally, you know, there's always going to be, you know, whenever you go super, if, whenever you go far left, there's always going to be a far right. You're always going to have this duality, you know what I mean? That's what it is to live on Earth. Um, but I think that finally, uh, there is a level of acceptance uh, and even beyond acceptance, I think that overall within, these, within the mainstream heteronormative society, we're starting just to see a willingness to understand. And I think that willingness to understand changes everything, you know? I think, I, I think if anything, it was probably his spirit as a fighter and a nonconformist when almost everyone or many people around him uh, were quite opposed to his beliefs, his sexuality, um, and the way in which he lived his life, you know? Um, you know, this is, you know, a pre-internet world, you know what I mean? Or for this first part of his life, at least, you know, this is a, a pre-internet world where, you know, he, he didn't have, you know, this digital diaspora of queer people in different countries or continents or cities that could cheer him on and say, yes, Nino, you're doing the right thing. You're saying the right thing. I, I imagine even if he had a community here in Palermo or people in Italy were finding out about what he was doing, it was just much more parochial, was much more provincial, you know what I mean? And he was really fighting for the rights of his people here. Um, and that, that means a lot, um, and that takes an extreme amount of courage, uh, especially um, in, in a Catholic country, especially, uh, 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 I, don't, I don't know if homosexuality at the time was criminalized in, in Italy or not, um, but, but still it just, it, it, took a lot of, it took a lot of courage to, to and, for, and for anyone like Nino Gennaro, you know what I mean, who is a predecessor to me or other queer artists or queer people in general, you know what I mean? To live your truth in that way 
where maybe you don't have anyone from the outside that says you're doing the right thing, but you're doing it anyway because you know in your heart it's the right thing. You know what I mean? That, that, that to me is, is the essence of what it means to live authentically. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, I mean, it's like, I guess, you know, when you have something like this that's like happening like on an island and, uh, and you know, it's, it's like, you know, the, the thing to do, you're going to get people that are just kind of coming out to experience something different. But I was, I mean, the, the amount of creative and artistic young people um, here as, as well, uh, uh, you know, ready to have these conversations, ready to talk, ready to, you know, be a part of this discourse. Super inspiring, you know what I mean? Super, super, super inspiring. Ready to, ready to critique, you know what I mean? Super, super inspiring. Um, well, they've, well, the Cecilia Queer Festival has, has really treated us quite well. Um, and I think not even just because, you know, I'm a juror or jurors, but because of the nature of the festival, you know what I mean? Um, I think I thought Palermo was gonna be a lot of, uh, a lot, I think I thought Palermo was gonna be a lot like, like Napoli. Um, uh, and I've never even been to Napoli, but uh, when you have like films like the Sophia Loren film, Boy with the Dolphin, or when you hear certain things, you know, as an, as an outsider, because I had been to Rome, I had been to Venice, I've been to the North, you know, um, I've been to Frenza. Uh, but I think that I thought that Palermo was going to be, when you think of the South, you think of like, you know, uh, really boisterous and really proud and really loud and lots of confusion everywhere, but like the, almost this beautiful kind of confusion, like, like every street is some crazy bazaar, you know what I mean? And, um, and I mean, all of, of course, all of this is stereotypes. Um, but Palermo is, is, is very, very relaxed. Um, uh, almost extremely calm, you know, I mean, I, I went to, to, you know, one, one market, um, you know, but it wasn't like this, this kind of like stereotypical, you know, idea that I had of like people, you know, slinging fish and, and they're, you know, uh, and, you know, and there being, you know, old ladies in the street and just certain things like that, you know, maybe, maybe that's also this fantasy, overall fantasy that I as an American and a lot of Americans have of Italy in general, you know, of a certain kind of Italy, you know. Um, so, uh, I mean, gosh, I think I'm taken away with the fact that like, you know, this festival was, and it's, I mean, there's no way, that you have to be honest, this, this festival was work. You know, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was work, you know, there was a, there was a lot of really great work and to even, you know, to just be able to watch and digest, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a lot, you know, but I mean, we had wonderful meals. Um, the, what I also didn't expect was, and I guess this is something that you can't, you can't, you don't, you, you can't, you know, you can't plan this. Just the camaraderie between uh, the people here. Um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the bonds, even if they're, you know, even if they're just acquaintance, acquaintanceships, you know, there are so many people at this festival that when I'm in their city, I would send them a text message or, you know, have a coffee or, you know what I mean? Seriously, um, uh, I really didn't expect this, this closeness. Um, uh, I mean, we all got to go out together on the weekend and, it's, yeah, it's, it's and, and also the talks. I mean, uh, I didn't, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the master class, but I, I was able, um, you know, uh, I, was a, I was able to kind of just be around some of the discussions that were being had. So many, so, so many intellectuals, um, so many people that have, you know, opposing points of view, but then to come together with this, like, love of cinema. Um, so, and, I, and honestly, I, this warmth, because I've heard that there are some film festivals, you know, where everyone, you know, kind of has like a stick up their butt. And, and that, that was not the case here at all. You know, people were very welcoming. There was a very rigorous schedule. But, you know, in the end, I mean, I think this is, this is for the people of Palermo. And as an outsider coming in, it, it really gives a great impression. Yeah. <laughs>